Hello everyone, I hope you are coming okay and you are not demotivated by this time of the year uh, and you are still up for it and, and dedicated to your studies. Um, a tip from my side, just love your books and enjoy uh, your way trip. Don't stress about anything else, don't stress about the outcome at the end of the year. For now, just enjoy the moment, live in the presence, live in the presence, that's all I can say. So, we're jumping into trigonometry now, it's one of the backbone of paper 2. If you can just master trigonometry, you um, I can assure you, you'll just be good. Yeah, I just draw the cross, you know, we have our fourth quadrants on our Cartesian plane. It's very important, but let's start with our trig ratios. The first one is, is sine theta. Uh, the sign of an angle whereby is equals to the opposite side over the hypotenuse side on a white on a right angle triangle only on a right angle triangle if it's not a right angle triangle this three ratios will not um, hold and you have to um, go to sign rule and cost rule and area rule to, to solve such problems uh, but this one's mainly hold on a right angle triangle and then our cos theta will be adjacent side all over hypotenuse and the last one will be tan theta which is equals to opposite side all over adjacent adjacent i love to cram tan using the gradient because i know tan theta is always equals to m and we know opposite sides is the y adjacent is the x then i just cram it by using the distance uh, not the distance the gradient formula so but the problem is uh, some people don't really know which side on this triangle which side is the hypotenuse which side is then uh, opposite or adjacent. I hope it's not you. But the easy way to cram it or know it, not cram, know it, is that the side that is like uh, facing the 90 uh, degrees corner, it's always your hypotenuse. Other people call it R. Right? Always, always is the hypotenuse. And then the side that the, the the side in which the angle is facing is always called the the opposite side. It's always called the opposite side. Then the remaining side you just know it's adjacent. Okay. Can we go through the program process again? Let's say you have another right angle triangle like this. Your angle is here. Then it simply means this side facing the angle is going to be your opposite. Always. You see your opposite changes. It's not always like this. You know, whereby you, you just know that with the side the angle is facing, it's always the opposite. And then the side the 90 degrees is facing, it's always the hypotenuse. And then the third side that's remaining, it's your adjacent. All right. Yeah, that's. Uh, I hope it's clear and uh, it's simplified enough. Then. Let's say that now you are given a maybe let's say you're given you're given sine of an angle theta is equals to four over three, four over five. Let's just say five, four over five. So looking at this and that, you can easily tell that your opposite side. Is going to be equals to 4 and then your hypotenuse side is going to be equals to 5 then the only side that you don't have is your adjacent side right and it calls for you to calculate the adjacent side how do we calculate the adjacent side by the guy called theorem of Pythagoras who says uh, let's use a different color theorem of Pythagoras who says x squared uh-uh, no color, that's a problem. X squared plus Y squared 
is equals to r squared whereby r it simply means your hypotenuse side I've, I've indicated here and then your y always means your opposite side y you see y on the y axis y on the y axis y axis y and x right and then your x is always your hypoadjacent adjacent then it simply means we don't have an x which is our adjacent plus y we have it's our opposite which is 4 squared and we have our r which is 5 squared then from here we go to solving our uh, x which is our adjacent squared is equals to 25 this is 25 5 squared is 25 this is uh 16 but it crosses the chain of signs and then minus 16. from here we take the square root we take the square root then we know that our adjacent side what we do on the left we also do on the right then we know that our adjacent side is equals to 25 minus 16 is 9 square root of 9 is 3 then we know our adjacent is 3. then from this three equation you can have your cos theta, you can have your tan theta, the meaning your cos theta in this case will be adjacent is 3, hypotenuse here is 5, and then your tan, this is not 8, it's 5, your tan theta, it's not 6, your tan theta will be how much, will be opposite which is 4, and then your adjacent which is 3 and then that's it and then drawing it here on the Cartesian plane you're just gonna draw it like this 90 degrees your adjacent side or your x is 3 your y which is 4 and then here's your theta to indicate that this is actually this is the opposite side and then to face the 90 degrees is your hypotenuse or your R, which is 5. See, any question until this point? I hope everything is clear. Uh, I hope everything is clear. And moving right along, let's say you have tan theta. Oh, let's say, you, let's use numbers now. Let's say you have tan theta 8 degrees is equals to k so if in this instant the way you are just given this always try to make sure that you have a fraction on the other side so that you can identify your what your opposite and the adjacent sign then we say over one because any number over one is that number then we haven't done any miracle then from here we can uh, extrapolate that our opposite because tan of any angle it's opposite over adjacent then our opposite is k and our adjacent will be what will be one and then the only thing that's missing is our hypotenuse can we calculate our hypotenuse yes the very same way we're looking for r now we have x and y and then it's just going to be the square root of k squared uh, plus one because one squared is one so there we go then you can have all the two ratios uh, your your cos theta would be your adjacent over would be your adjacent over hyper adjacent is one over hypotenuse is the square root of k squared plus what one and then your your sine theta what's your sine theta will be in case of our opposite which is k over uh, hypotenuse like that and this is part of revision since we did trigonometry since grade 10 i know most of the things you know and they're boring by now and then yeah 
from here then um i can introduce you to i can introduce you to the reduction reduct, reduction formulas formulas whereby we know when we count on the fifteen pin we start at zero and then we go positive way in this fashion this is the positive movement and then this way we are going in a negative counting then if you are starting from zero this from here to here we form a 90 degrees then this is going to be a at 90 degrees another 90 this will be our 180 degrees another 90 plus 90 is going to be 270 plus 90 takes us back to zero where we can identify it as 360 degrees we can add another 90 and keep going and if we are subtracting then we go back in a in a clockwise direction so yeah reduction formula tells us that uh, an important part says all meaning all uh, ratios are positive and only sign in this side is positive and then only turn in this side is positive and only cos in this side is positive then whenever they say 180 minus a certain portion let's just say a theta and remember theta must not be in most cases theta doesn't is theta is not greater than 90 it's not then simply 180 minus theta simply means we are moving forward we moved from 0 90 and 180 right but now minus meaning we are changing direction backwards and since it's not more than 90 it has to be in this quadrant just in this quadrant only that's where we have our 90 minus eight right then if we we need uh cos 180 minus this bracket tells us it's in this quadrant but cos in this quadrant must be it's not positive then this tend to become negative cos theta then we do away with the 100, 180 degrees let's do it sine into 180 degrees minus theta already we know we go 90 we go 180 but then negative it says we must count backwards then it we end and then theta is not greater than 90 then it means we're in the second quadrant but sine in the second quadrant is positive then we know what it's going to be sine positive and then we do away with the 90 degrees this is what they call the reduction formulas then with the tan as well it's the same story I think this one we can do whereby it's going to be what are we talking about say second quadrant and turn in this side it's negative because only sign is positive then we're going to have negative turn you see in second quadrant turn is negative cos is negative only sign is positive that's what i meant with the s so don't forget the a s t and c so i don't know how you can memorize it other people sing some song i don't know about you then you can as well maybe say course we can as well explore course 180 plus the theta which quadrant is this we are moving 180 99 and then here it's 180 now we are eating theta theta is going to get us in here because we are still adding going forward then we know this is the third quadrant then cos in the third quadrant is negative only time is positive then this is going to give us negative cos theta right good and then we same with sine um what's what sign sign are in the same quadrant it's negative sign in here only turn is positive good and then you keep doing like that you keep doing like that 
the bracket tells you which quadrant is it and then you look at the truth ratio and then these uh, are the most important aspects of it now. thank you so much looking forward to see you on the next video please give us a like please comment please tell your friends to subscribe to this channel so that we get educated together together each achieve more bye